The unsung heroes of our favorite battles are undoubtedly the arenas. Often, they are overlooked when it comes to discussing the best of the best, but when they go wrong, they can absolutely destroy an otherwise awesome boss fight. They set the stage for the tone, the atmosphere, and the mechanical components of a battle that we as players are yearning to reach. I've covered these unsung heroes in a top 10 boss arenas video previously, but now it's time to cover those that flopped so hard that might have actually destroyed an otherwise awesome battle. Number 10, Moonlight Butterfly. The arena of the Moonlight Butterfly reflects a problem with Dark Souls 1's game design and game philosophy. There was clearly a desire to put some ideas into play that the game simply did not have the mechanics to match. From the clunky platforming of the Bed of Chaos to the obviously poorly paced fight with the Moonlight Butterfly, this was unbridled ambition that led to a poor user experience. From the lack of omnidirectional rolling when locked on, to the poor attack options given to melee players, this entire battle turns into a waiting game thanks to a thin strip of bridge that the player has to work with. Thankfully, there isn't the possibility of rolling off the map, but that's small praise. You didn't go far enough to piss me off, you just made me mildly annoyed and bored. Perhaps some reimagining could have led this fight to be a lot better, such as if there were steps to lead you up to the butterfly where she could swoop by and a well-timed slice could clip her and cause her to come down to rest, leading to a real brawl. Perhaps there could have been a special weapon, like in the case of Rykard, where melee players were given an opportunity for advanced range to deal with airborne threats. Unfortunately, we are left instead with a snooze fest. Again, I'll take a snooze fest over a rage fest any day, but that's the only reason this isn't higher on the list. Well, that and how pretty the arena is. I mean, it really is nice to look at. Number 9, Godskin Duo. Do I genuinely think the Godskin Duo arena is worse than over a hundred other arenas in the series? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hear me out though. The main problem I have with the Godskin Duo is that this was a boss that was released over a decade after the first Dark Souls. There was literally a boss in that first game that had solved the God's Kid problem already. There were pillars for crowd control. This was even apparent in some of the Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, or Bloodborne bosses. Pillars for multi-enemy boss fights. When I first walked into this arena, I was giddy, overflowing with childlike glee at the appearance of these holy structures. Pillars, columns, posts, poles. These glorious constructions would spare us from unwieldy gankage, but they were destructible. After a decade of knowledge gains, reverting back to an old mistake time and time again is just unforgivable. Alert, alert, additional comment to make. While I was looking back at the footage, I did realize that the Ornstein and Smell fight do feature destructible pillars. The difference, though, is that multiple attacks from Ornstein and Smell do not go through those collapsed pillars. They still get caught on the pillars, and they can't throw fireballs over them. When Godskin Duo attacks you and they throw a fireball, it can go right over that collapsed pillar, which destroys the entire purpose of using them for crowd control and defense. Thanks. So yes, there are some nice visual ornate designs throughout the arena, and yada yada, and the pillars are there for show, but because FromSoft had a desire to show off their fancy new destructible technology, we had to pay the price for a mistake that has since become lame as hell. Just copy your own good fights, FromSoft, come on. Number 8, make a lash. As previously mentioned, the design of an arena can reflect an overall perspective on the mechanics of the boss itself. The Moonlight Butterfly has a fine arena for what it's going for, a battle of attrition with an unattackable enemy, but that core premise and the mechanics of the game itself has made that premise untenable. The same is true with Mikalash, but rather than resulting in boredom, this resulted in fury and unbridled gamer rage. In this case, the mechanics are well enough suited for the hunt, I suppose. The arena looks spooky enough, I suppose? However, the entire idea of this hunt is based on a fairly dated Mikalash AI that makes it feel a bit more like playing Pac-Man than it feels like a Souls game. 
The random addition of skeletons feels more like a nuisance and a cheap attempt at creating atmosphere than something that legitimately adds anything to the experience. I'm trying to not let my bias of the horribly annoying repeated voice lines get to me too much, but it's hard not to when this fight can be so annoying and drawn out even longer by the massive maze-like arena. Finally, when you do actually fight Mikalash, it's in a little room, a, a simple room, there's literally nothing to it. It's just, a, it's just a little square box. I do get you're supposed to have trapped him in here, so it's not like a grand final battle location, but it really just feels out of place for the mechanics of the game. Number seven, Throne Watcher and Defender. If we're gonna spend any amount of time going in on Godskin Duo and the degrading quality of gank arenas, at least an equal amount of frustration needs to be levied at the penultimate battle of Dark Souls 2. Not only is this arena reused up to three times in three different boss battles, it's an empty flat space with edges you can fall off while being ganked. It's hard to imagine a worse combination of things that I could say in a sentence. It's gotta be up there with puppy shot at point blank range at Make-A-Wish meetup. The only saving grace, and I mean the only saving grace, is how cool this section of the game really looks. They saved some of the most epic looking stuff for last, and it kinda works. But if we stripped back all the bells and whistles and special lighting and textures, this would be shown for what it really is. An abomination. <laughs> they didn't even try to go through the motions of putting fake pillars up, it's just nothing. Number six, Centipede Demon. I don't know if this should count the blinding lava from release or judge it on its current merits, but this is just a fuster cluck every way you slice it. It's enough slices! Like, it's one thing to have a small piece of land to fight a boss on. It's another to have a massive boss that has huge mobility in an early Souls game where you don't have the same agility. It's another entirely to combine all of these into one monster mash mayhem bonanza. Like, they couldn't decide which way to F it up. So they chose all of them. This fight in a big open space might have actually worked. Or the arena could have been alright if you were fighting a smaller Gwyn sized boss. But the choices here just don't work together. It's like pineapple on pizza. I know I triggered some of you. Number 5. Belfry Gargoyles. This is the first of two arenas on the list that are not only poorly designed arenas, but also copies of a previous boss arena. And as you can tell, I don't tend to love when arenas devolve in quality over time. I feel like we should be using our learnings to iterate and evolve rather than to do whatever the hell this was. And it's not even just a direct copy and paste, it actually even makes it legitimately worse. For one, you don't step upon this rooftop after a hefty climb as a reward for your discoveries and adventures. Oh no, you essentially walk onto it by accident in a way that doesn't really make it feel groundbreaking. Fine, I guess, but it takes away from the awe of breaking above the canopy of cities and trees that you've been in up to this point. And to top it all off, they betray the original spicy layout. Originally, the sloped rooftops aided the player by providing a respite from the flames in a 2 on one scenario. Now it feels like the sloped roof provides even less coverage than before, and it's a four on one battle. This arena needed to be evolved and developed to compensate for the added enemies. But hey, copying is easier, I suppose. <sighs> Number four, Bed of Chaos. Has this boss been lambasted enough? Absolutely. I think everybody knows why this arena sucks. The boss is the arena, and it's most people's least favorite boss, and for good reason. Can't say much to defend the Bed of Chaos, but why not number one? Well, I suppose I love the aesthetics of the arena. It at least has some ambitious ideas behind it, and I can respect that over copying and pasting. And the interactivity of the arena is at least interesting, like how it breaks apart. But a huge reason of why this fight sucks is, well, it really isn't a fight. Once you get through the arena, the quote-unquote fight is over. Maybe that's why I put this a little bit higher. There's more to this arena. It provides more of an experience. Or maybe I'm just being controversial to be controversial. But I think there are a few arenas that provide less to the player and rub my rhubarb the wrong way even more so than the Bed of Chaos. And before we get into the top three, please remember to like the video and subscribe. It means a lot to me personally and to the algorithm gods of YouTube. And check the description for Soulsborne and Elden Ring playlists to hold you over until that DLC drops, hopefully soon. Number three, Blue Smelter Demon. When it comes to bad DLC content, it's hard to ever look at From Software as an example. Nearly every DLC they have ever provided us ups the ante that the base game provided with faster paced combat, better music, harder challenges, and grander spectacle. 
Typically, you get something that I would pay double for to experience, such as the Old Hunters DLC in Bloodborne or the Ringed City in Dark Souls 3. Unfortunately, there are sections in the Dark Souls 2 DLC that absolutely do not feel warranted. With a hefty three-part DLC, which you must purchase each individually, I'm expecting a slew of original content and there they go reskinning a previous boss. I actually don't mind reskins if they're done properly. A fantastic example is Lawrence in the Old Hunters DLC. Reskins the Cleric Beast, but provides an alteration in the second phase, a different setting to battle in, and epic music overall. Wait, what was the other thing I said? A different setting? This is essentially the same tiny room as the original? But he's blue? Oh, sign me up, I guess. Just kidding, what is that? As much as I do technically have fun with the blue smelter boss fight, I feel like it's actually an affront to humanity that we have to fight him in nearly an identical tiny room. Like at least reskin the floor. Come on guys. It would have been really interesting to see this boss with a slightly increased level of aggression in a more open space. Perhaps it would change the dynamic of the battle entirely, but we'll never know because it's part two of the other one. Number two, man eaters. If you wanted to combine all the worst aspects of a Souls boss arena, I swear to god you'd come up with man-eaters. While I do think the challenge is there, and the boss itself is relatively well designed, everything to do with this disgusting, filthy arena makes me want to have acid diarrhea, curse rotted Greatwood style. The thing is, if we had this exact same boss with a wider layout, not this pencil dick bridge, it'd be okay. If the boss didn't send you flying backwards with nearly every hit, it'd be okay. If the bosses didn't spend half of the fight in the middle of the air, it'd be okay. If it wasn't a gank fight, it'd be okay. But all of these things coexist in a fight that makes me angrier than just about any in the entire series. With all this said, it's not even a bad fight. If I redid my entire boss ranking series, including the man eaters, I can't see them really being in the bottom tier. But for what they could have been, as a true challenge in a game full of pushovers, I put a huge amount of that blame on the lackluster arena. But number one, as you guys all probably know, is Capper Demon. The OG, the original controller breaker and mind destroyer. From start to finish, this is just an absolutely abysmal design. I'll get the one okay element out of the way first. The stairs, wow, amazing. The thing is, it's like putting whipped cream on a turd. It makes it slightly easier to get down, but at the end of the day, you're still eating a freaking turd. The second you walk in, you're berated with three enemies sprinting at you, a camera angle that doesn't give you a clear view of any of it, and just about nowhere to go. You might get stun locked and get one shot. You might get away scot-free, but you might as well just flip a coin because of that's how random the experience is. Then you run up the stairs and hope for the best that you don't get stunlocked again, your camera doesn't bug out, and you can actually see what's going on in the shoebox of an arena. Then you run around the staircase, slowly chipping away at the enemies, running up and down and dropping down and... <sighs> when a Souls boss becomes a flowchart rather than an interactive and fast-paced challenge, you know you messed something up. If you only fought the Capra Demon in here and not the dogs, this baby bag bitch size arena might have actually worked. But throwing in the fast moving dogs is just way too much. You know it, I know it, we all know it. And that's my list. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. Give me your list down below and peace.